Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. I hope you guys are having an amazing day or night whenever you're listening to this. Um, Today I wanted to share about the fruits of the spirit. Um, Obviously most of you have listened to this podcast before and I kind of have had a little bit of a variety we'll say. It obviously always kind of goes back to faith because it is a faith-based podcast, faith-based podcast. But sometimes I'll share about life updates and other things um, because it's almost four years old. Like the podcast is getting pretty old and we've taken, not pretty old, but we've taken some breaks here and there. But as a whole, I mean, I've shared a lot, like well over a hundred episodes. I can't remember how many, but I wanted to share that I'm just going to keep this faith-based going forward. I'm not a, a preacher or a teacher and this, who I'm speaking to are my sisters and the few brothers that listen to, but my brothers and sisters in Christ, the people who are like myself, trying to live a godly, holy life. This is a podcast where I just want to be real and transparent about the things that I'm going through, the things that I've been through, the areas where I have so fallen short because there is no shame or condemnation in Christ Jesus. And I just want people to experience and encounter the love of God like I have, his grace. That's why the podcast is embraced with grace because I fell short so many times knowing that there was something else out there. I couldn't even claim ignorance because I knew that there was something better. I was so blessed to have been raised in the things of God and I still messed up over and over and over. Um, Some of it, there's context to it. Some of it, it was just me walking not in a holy lifestyle and um, I didn't want to for a season. And so I've really tried always and you guys have, you know, given me great feedback that I think it comes across that way that There is no part of me ever that is like, this is how you're to do life. Like, no, none of us are perfect. So anyways, I'm off on a little tangent, but I always want everything I share not to come across like, hey, I have it figured out because I don't. I just want to share, hey, these are the areas where I was my most heartbroken and they all have to happen to be when I was away from the father. This is when I have experienced the most joy and peace and contentment and happiness and all the things. And it's always been with him. So I'm just sharing. This is a sharing podcast. This is a safe space, hopefully, for all of us. You don't have to be a believer to listen. Um, But yeah, I just want people to encounter the love of God like I have because there's just nothing like it. You can't stay the same once you do. So anyways, this podcast, I'm going to talk about the fruit of the spirit. And I'm going to go off on like a couple few, a couple few a few little tangents, um, but it's just been really cool and it's still unfolding. So I apologize if you're like, maybe what is happening here? What are you saying? I'm going to do my best, but I just feel like this will encourage somebody. So we're going to jump right in. I was in my Bible reading the other day and I am doing a Bible study that is 40 days through the Bible. And each week there is, you know, just a different kind of We go through different books of the Bible, but it's always connecting Old Testament to New Testament. We're looking up tons of scriptures. There's um, not journal prompts, but actual questions. Like it's a literal study guide. So I'm studying the word just in context. I'm looking at different translations. I'll link it below if you're interested. It has been such a blessing to me, especially my time and energy is a little limited and lacking these days. So to have something that is truly a guide guiding me through and provoking me to think about things versus me trying to come up with thinking about things um, has really been awesome in this season. But the first thing I wanna encourage you with is if you don't already do this, and I know so many of you do, if you do not pray before you get into the word or even pray before you pray, and what I mean by that is inviting the Holy Spirit into that moment. Obviously, I try to do it all day, every day, but I realized recently, like I've been experiencing what I can only say is burnout. And over the last year or two, there have been some pretty low points that I could only describe as full-blown depression. Um, Those are different conversations for a different day. But that being said, I do my best to invite God in and to bring him into every moment. But I was still just having these really lacking and low points. And... um, God's been convicting my heart lately of, hey, it's not so much the time, but it's the quality of time that we spend together. And I haven't really been making him a priority. It's kind of like, oh, I'll get to my Bible time 
at lunch when the kids are down or I'll get to my Bible time before bed. And again, getting it in when you can is important. I'm not knocking what your situation is, but you know when it's just, in, it's you, it's personal. It has nothing to do with anyone else. You can be looking at other women and there's like the difference between conviction versus, you know, shame and condemnation. You can be watching, you know, condemnation is you looking at a mom who gets up at 5 a.m., does her hour devotion, goes to the gym, and you feel terrible about yourself. And the enemy is in your ear like, you're not like that. You're not as good of a daughter of God. You're not as good. That's condemnation. That is not from God at all. But then there are some times when you see people you know, starting their morning or they, they just simply say like, yeah, I wake up 20 minutes before the kids just so I can like have that quiet time to pray. And you feel the Holy Spirit. You feel God say, I'm inviting you to do that too. And you're like, I don't want to wake up 20 minutes early, but you don't feel worse about yourself. It's just like a tug and a pull on your heart. And so lately I've been feeling this tug and this pull in my heart to not so much the time of day, but the heart in which I approach my Bible time, the heart in which I approach, like my expectancy. I used to expect to see God's face and hear his voice. And when I say see his face, I don't mean that in the literal sense, but like I would approach this as like, Holy Spirit, I invite you into this space. I am approaching the throne room of heaven. I just want to sit at your feet, Jesus. I want to curl up on your lap. Like that was where my heart was at. And I always encountered him. And I think just due to trying to cope with a lot of different things, um, a cross country move, as much as it's been wonderful, there have been some really, really, really hard and challenging things. There have been some really heavy things we've walked through as a family that nobody knows about um, that are a lot better now, but just, I've just walked through a lot of heavy stuff as so many of us. But as a result, I kind of, let me get back into the fruits of the spirit because this will kind of do it. Like one of the fruits of the spirit is um, gentleness. And I feel like I used to have a gentleness, but now or recently I've been operating in like a hardness. I feel like my heart has hardened a little bit. And I think it's because of walking through these heavy things that truly needed to be felt and dealt with and maybe some things that need to have been grieved and it just doesn't feel good. I'm like, I don't want to do that. So I stuffed and I numbed and I, but as a result, then my heart has been hardened. So when my heart is hard, I can't be gentle or soft because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if my heart is hard, then what's gonna come out are gonna be harsh words to my husband, harsh words to my kids, and they did nothing. It's not like, you know, my husband is being acting up and I'm like, mm, and we're just nippy at each other, like which happens, because we're human, or my kids are just like testing me or what. No, it's none of that. They're perfectly fine. And that is, that's why we really have to guard our hearts and make sure that we are prioritizing our spiritual health and that time with God so that he can fill us up so that that is what flows out of us. But I just, you guys, basically, I don't even know if I said it. So I went into, the, I had my devotion time the other day. It had me open the word to Galatians 6, 24, which is the scripture verse right after the fruits of the spirit. So the reason what got me on this whole tangent anyway, is I read that what was in my um, de study guide and then I glanced up at the verse above it and that's when it hit me, which is the fruits of the spirit. And it says the fruit, um, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And that's what hit me and it grieved my heart because I was like, wow, God, I am lacking in so much of this fruit. I just shared gentleness being one. My heart is hard. I'm not as gentle as I once was. I'm lacking in that fruit. Joy. I am lacking in the joy of the Lord. Point blank. Like, I have moments of happiness, but happiness has to do with external factors. You know, something makes you laugh. The weather is great. Um, you, you know, see something funny. You find a good sale. Whatever it is, like you eat a great meal. Those are all external. And yes, they bring you happiness. And that's wonderful. That's like such a gift. But there's a difference between happiness and the joy of the Lord. That no matter what's happening externally, internally, your heart is bursting and leaping. And the great thing about fruit is that fruit trees don't die when you pick up the fruit. That's literally their very purpose. And the way that God was showing me is, 
when you are a healthy Christian and you are mature to the point where you are bearing fruit, other people can partake of that fruit because let's be honest, your fruit is not for you. Your fruit is for others. And if we are living a godly, righteous life, then we are partaking of each other's fruit. It's this beautiful, I don't know if symbiotic relationship is the right thing. It's not codependent, but it's kind of like there's another scripture in here that I'm sure you've heard, which talks about iron sharpening iron. And I'm like, that's like a very popular verse for like men's conferences. And it's like bold and strong and iron sharpening iron. But I also saw it kind of, even when it comes to fruit, like we're supposed to be able to partake of each other's fruit and um, so joy peace I've had moments of peace that surpasses all understanding and moments of just intense anxiety and anxiousness and worry and I don't ever come into agreement with these things like I know my authority in Christ and I will I will rebuke things but it's as if they're not I'm resisting but there's not this change in the shift that I felt in the past. And so I'm like, God, what is going on? Patience, obviously I'm a mom of two toddlers. No one is gonna have like all the patience in the world, but I hope that you can understand. And maybe you don't have kids, but you know there's some moments when you are just, you're operating, you're bearing fruit. You're operating in a way that you're not easily provoked. You're super patient. Instead of being like, wow, they looked at me wrong or she said the wrong thing, you're thinking of them. You're like, oh, wow, Lord, she must be having a bad day. I'm going to pray for them immediately. Like, God, I don't know what's going on. Instead of you seeing the offense towards you or the thing that you're lacking, you approach it from a fruitful place, which is I want to pray for them. I want to cover them. There must be something going on. Um kindness like I try to be kind but like I said with that shortness like I haven't always been kind um, goodness faithfulness self-control self-control has been another one I've been saying for months I really need to do a fast because I feel like my flesh man is just out of control and fasting is such a great way to strengthen your spirit man so anyways I just was looking at these and it hit me and it grieved my soul because it was very obvious I do not have these fruits pouring out of me. I just, I don't. And so I just really got with God and I was just praying and I'm like, Lord, how can I, how can I change this? How can I shift this? How can I bear and produce more fruit? Also, I know there was a time in my life where I did produce that fruit. So what, what is going on? Like, am I not inviting you in? Am I operating apart from you? So I started looking up some scriptures um, about producing fruit one of my well these are three of my favorites actually but um john 15 verses four and five says remain in me and i will remain in you no branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain in the vine i am the vine you are the branches if a man remains in me and i in him he will bear much fruit apart from me you can do nothing i did not know i was never conscious that i was apart from him but a huge looking back a huge sign that i was apart from him was a the lack of the fruits of the spirit and b burnout burnout is not from god burnout means you have poor boundaries and you're doing everything in your own might where it says right here in verse five if you remain in me and i in him and i if a man remains in me and i in him he will bear much fruit apart from me you can't do anything it's like abiding in him is where the fruit is. We can't be cut off from the vine. And what happens when you take a stick off of a tree? It dies because it's not connected to the trunk and to the root system that is pulling up the water. Um, and so I was like, wow, Lord, how did that happen? And he's like, you're trying to do too much on your own. And I, and I didn't even realize I was doing that, but I came up with systems and all kinds of things. And they were all coping mechanisms so that I could control what was going on so that I didn't have to feel the discomfort of the things that he was trying to bring me through. So I really hope that encourages someone. Maybe you're a control person like me. That's one of your defaults where instead of letting go and being open-handed and letting God just take things out that he wants and put things in that he wants, when you encounter change or uncomfortable circumstances, maybe you're like me and your default is to just white knuckle. I'm just gonna hold on for the ride. We're gonna get through this. And he's like, let go. Like you're holding on to the wrong ride. Like I, I actually wanna get you off the ride. You don't even like rides. You're getting nauseous from doing going upside down and going on all these loops and you're just hanging on for dear life. Like I'll just get off when the ride stops. And he's like, 
baby girl, like, let go. Let me just get you off the ride now. Like this is going in circles and in loops and you think you're going somewhere and that it's just like, you know, you're on a stormy sea and once you get to the, you just gotta ride out the storm, but really you're on a roller coaster that is just on the on switch and the enemy is not doing anything. And we feel like he's coming with attacks and this and that. Really, he just turned the on switch on and he's like waiting and hoping and, you know, I wouldn't say he's praying, but he's hoping that we don't realize that we are the ones who are sitting on his ride and that we don't wake up and say, wait, I can get off this. And that was something that has been such a cool revelation to me is like, oh, Lord, I apologize. I repent. Like I can just get off this ride. But then the other verse is John 15, 16. And it says, I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And I think sometimes people talk about fruit, like, oh, look at the fruit in their life. And it's like a godly marriage or kids or like a lot of children or um, financial blessing. And can those be fruits? Like, can that be an example of being fruitful? I, sure, I think so. But what about like, I was a single girl until I was 30. Does that mean I didn't have any fruit? There, there I, We struggled with fertility. There are tons of people who can't bear children and don't have enough money to go through the process of adoption to even adopt. Does that mean they're not fruitful? Some people are, they don't have a lot of money to their name and they are working on financial goals or they're working to get out of debt. Does that mean they're not fruitful? So I like to, I think sometimes something that helps me is to pause when I think of certain things and really be detailed about like, what do I, what do I view this as? And is that even right? Because if I look at fruitfulness as this way and God's looking at it over here, well, then my entire metric system is completely off. So anyways, I just realized I was operating in my own might from a place of my own strength, which led to burnout, which led to exhaustion, which led to not even having enough energy to spend with him. And again, I would love to say I'm just the, mo the best Christian. I invite God into every day. I start every morning at 5 a.m. with him. I do X, Y, and Z. And I'm sure you've seen women like that. That's not me. I'm still on this journey. I am doing my best. But he is such a kind and loving God. And that's what I want people to understand. And that's what I want everyone to just experience once in their life. Because when you feel that overwhelming love and peace um, and just acceptance and grace from him, it just changes your whole world. Um, so one thing about me is that um, God really speaks to me in pictures. I mean, I've already referenced like a sea versus a roller coaster. I see things very visually since the time I was little. I very, very much, um, he, he shows me things in analogies and in pictures. I see it so clearly. And so when I was looking at fruit and bearing fruit and not bearing fruit, I was led to kind of basically do like hours of research on plants and literal fr fruit trees. And I was seeing how oftentimes potted plant, well, then God asked me this, he goes, are you potted or are you planted? And I'm like, what do you mean by that? And he was showing me how potted plants, like if you have a fruit tree that you put in a potted plant in your living room, it's not that it can't bear fruit, it can, but it's the conditions have to be so insanely perfect. I would have to be so attentive to that apple tree or to whatever that I probably couldn't really do much else because it's not designed to bear fruit in a pot. It is meant to be planted outside in the soil in the right environment. And so that was the first thing that God was like telling me, are you potted or are you planted? Because if I'm potted, that means I'm just stagnant and I'm just in a dark corner was kind of the picture I got. Like a sad, um, a sad little fruit tree, like wishing I could bear fruit, but inside, not getting direct sunlight, not getting natural air, just getting circulated AC air, looking out the window at all the other trees planted in the soil, but I'm inside. And so he was really telling me, you need to take a good look at where you are positioned. Where are you placed right now? Are you placed where I told you to? Because it is harder to do things with little kids, as I'm sure all of you who have little kids or have had them know, but it's not an excuse to not be positioned where he has called you to be positioned. And that's different for everyone. For me, I know I need to go be in church. Even if I'm not receiving the whole message, I need to be around other believers. I need to make time for friendships. I need to make time for a family. It's so easy for me, especially when Kellen's out of town, to wake up in the morning, handle my business with just the kids, not see anyone all day, 
or just get out to the grocery store or something, but not spend any time with anyone, get them to bed, go to bed and do the whole thing again. And God was telling me like, I have more for you. I have so much more for you and I have more for your kids. They deserve to see you where I've called you. Um, so when I looked up, why would trees stop producing fruit? These are some of the reasons and God spoke to me through all of them. That's why I'm sharing. Number one, not enough exposure to sunlight. And then the first thing that came to mind was the verse, he's the light of the world. Am I in a position where I am being exposed um, and his light can shine on me? Of course it can alone, but that's the importance of community and other people, people who can speak life to you, people who are literally reflecting the light of Jesus and they can shine it right back in your face, right back in your soul. We need that. Um, not enough water. The verse that came to mind, he is the living water. You know, like we need to partake of being in the Bible, being in the scriptures, being in prayer. Like we need to make sure that we are not drying up. We need to make sure that we have that living water um, that we're partaking in all the time. A lack of pollinating. When trees are planted outside, God uses other things, insects, other trees of the same species, the wind, all these things to pollinate. So if you are in your, in, on your own, if you are isolated, this I feel like is encouragement for the person who is staying isolated and you're not growing, you're not bearing fruit, you're looking around, you're watching other people flourish, it is time to get up and go out and be amongst people who can pollinate you. And I don't mean that in a weird way, I just mean that in the sense that we are called, again, like I said, iron sharpens iron, well, we're called to pollinate each other. There are things that you have that the world needs. And if you are just sitting in isolation in your bedroom, on your phone, watching Netflix, never going out, and it doesn't have to be this big grand thing, but maybe it is, but it could be something as simple as you go to the coffee shop and the Holy Spirit says, hey, I want you to tell that girl that you love her hair, that she looks beautiful today. And you're like, oh, that's embarrassing, but fine. Just be like, hey, I love your hair. Like you look really beautiful today. And you don't know that just that morning, that woman, that girl was standing in the mirror looking at herself and the enemy, the lie of the enemy was telling her, you're so hideous, you're so ugly. You know what, you're not even pretty enough to be here. Those types of thoughts are real and people are struggling with them. And just one encouraging word from you it wouldn't land the same if it came from me. It wouldn't land the same because God has something to speak through you specifically. So whoever, whoever that is for, if you are in isolation and you're just like, what's the point? People need you and you need people. It is just the way God designed us. Mature trees need to be pruned. Um, John 15, 2 says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will bear even more fruit. And so I looked up a few, um, a handful of reasons why pruning is important. The first one is the health. Pruning helps keep trees healthy by removing dead and damaged branches, which helps the tree conserve energy for fruit production. Pruning also helps prevent the spread of disease. There might be some toxic people in your life that are branches of you, if you will. God might want to prune those away because so much of your energy is going to that toxic relationship or to that disease that is in your life versus that energy going into producing the fruit that God has for you. So I want all of us to take inventory of the things that come up that might be, God might be wanting to prune, but we're like, but God, that's our mom. That's my boyfriend. That's my best friend of 25 years. And God might be like, yeah, but they've stopped growing. And if you wanna grow and if you wanna produce fruit, it is time to sever that branch. Um, fruit production. Pruning encourages fruit production by, allowed, by allowing light to reach the fruit for optimal ripening. If you think of a tree that's kind of overgrown and has a lot of branches or a lot of leaves, sometimes just that thick covering needs to be pruned away so that the sunlight can infiltrate the entire tree. And I think sometimes when our life is going really, really good and it's so full, we're like, no, Lord, don't take anything away, please. But God's like, if you keep going in this direction, eventually what you can't see that I can see, it's going to taper off. It's going to die and you're going to die. I need to prune some things away, even in this really fruitful season, so that in the next season, you can be even more fruitful. 
Um, structure and stability. Pruning helps establish a good structure and sturdier branch structure that's easier to access for maintenance and harvest. And the way that I saw this was structure and stability. If you in your life, if something is growing kind of abnormally over here, Bob might be wanting to prune some extra weight so that you can stand and be even more anchored upright in him so that when storms come, when wind comes, when a thunderstorm, you know, whenever a tornado, like you're planted deeply. Your center of gravity is there. It's just you and him solid in the ground versus think of a relationship or someone pulling you off balance. It doesn't take as much for you to literally fall completely over if something is pulling on you. So sometimes we need to be pruned because something is pulling us out of balance and out of um, being centered with God. Pruning not fruit bearing branches concentrates the nutrients and energy the tree receives to the areas that provide fruit. You guys, I think I this is something kind of hit me is I'm like, I need to look at my life and I need to look at the areas that are not the branches, so to speak, that are not producing fruit. And I need to be willing to give them up because I cannot that my energy is so split and so scattered that if I could just cut and sever these things, whether it's too much time on social media, a bad relationship. Um, not not loving yourself enough to like go to bed early at a reasonable whatever those things are that need to be pruned away imagine the amount of energy and time that could go into producing fruit and how much more fruitful we would be and then the last thing aesthetic appeal pruning removes damaged limbs and gives aesthetic appeal to the tree i think a lot of people like to say that god doesn't care if things are beautiful god literally made beauty he made the world around us so gorgeous and i don't mean even though this does say aesthetic appeal i don't mean that you have to be a certain size have a certain eye color wear a certain outfit i think all of you know what i mean when you come across someone who is glowing like they are literally oozing the presence of god their face is shining and when you leave them you don't remember what they were wearing you don't remember if they had makeup on but you were like wow they were beautiful because they had been with the father they were literally a mirror of Jesus. When they looked at you with their eyes, you saw and felt the Father's love. Like you saw, you felt the Holy Spirit's presence. Like that is who I want to be. I want to be someone who has fruit like that, where not the aesthetic appeal of the world, that's like, look at me, look at my outfit, look how pretty I am, I'm getting all these things done. And again, I'm not saying any of that is bad, but that's not your drive, that's not your desire. Your desire is, I want people to leave being like, wow, she as a whole was beautiful. The way she talked about others, the way she talked about God, the way that she um, shared about what Jesus has done in her life, like that was a beautiful person. I wanna be beautiful like that. And then the last thing he said, told me, which is maybe the most important at all, important of all, is the last note was it's important to prune at the right time and in the right way as it is possible to kill a healthy tree through either neglect or over pruning. Each type of fruit tree has different needs and techniques. So what God might need to prune from you, he might not need to prune from someone else. But like it says here, it is possible to kill a tree by neglecting pruning altogether when you refuse to cut off the dead areas one bad apple spoils the bunch. When you refuse to cut off that one toxic relationship or that toxic or that sinful behavior, it will rot your entire tree. You not only will not produce fruit, you will die. And I have been there where I'm like, I am, I'm dead. Like I've been cut off from the light. I've been cut off from the water. I have diseased branches. I am operating in sin. I'm not getting um, air, you know, like air circulation. I'm not being pollinated by other believers. Like I am dying. I have no life left in me and I definitely don't have any fruit. So neglect can kill a tree and obviously stop from producing fruit. But the one that I think he really wanted me to, to see was over pruning. And what I mean by over pruning, it's kind of like, I would never over prune. Like pr over pruning is, pruning is painful. But the thing that I think God wanted me to really see in this is sometimes I take things that are uncomfortable or discomfort and I'm like, oh, it's bad it's not of God. So I try to prune things away that God actually brought to me. He's like, no, I literally, that is my one branch. That branch that you're trying to cut off is going to be the branch that produces so much fruit. It's going to be bursting. Like it's just going to be raining fruit off of that one branch that you feel like you need to get rid of because it's causing you discomfort. But discomfort sometimes is from God. 
He uses discomfort to hone us and to allow us to, or invite us to rely on him more and to lean on him more. So anyways, I know this was a long-winded one. I hope some of that at least made sense to you guys, but I have not arrived, but I am on this journey and I'm so excited. I can't tell you how excited I am because just in this short time, me really being intentional and me really um, bringing my whole heart and my whole life back to his throne and opening my hands, not clinging on, white knuckling, this stupid roller coaster that I'm like, I just wanna, it's gonna stop and then I'll get off. And God's like, you can get off now. Like the way I'm seeing it is I'm holding on to this the, during this storm. And he's like, it's not a storm. It's a freaking roller coaster. You don't have to be on it. You don't have to experience this nausea and sickness and just dizziness and disorienting. Like, and if you've ever been on a roller coaster, they're loud too. You're on this track, they're loud. You can't really hear clearly. You can't discern. If the person next to you is yelling something at you, you might be able to kind of hear them. But imagine if you were at the front, your friend's at the back, and they're trying to tell you something like you can't hear. So I think that, that has, that's been where my spirit has been. My spirit has been on this roller coaster that I have told myself, oh, it's just a storm. It'll stop, it'll end, and then I'll get off. And God has been trying to get my attention and say, Brittany, you are on a ride that I never called you to be on. You don't have to feel all this disorienting. And it was literally like the moment I saw that and the moment I figuratively and metaphorically like opened my hands and let go and in my mind just kind of like stepped off of that ride it was like all the voices silenced all the noise silenced the loud just banging and lack of peace lack of joy lack of that gentle like all of those things just calmed and I feel like now he's like okay now we can start growing again. Now we can start producing fruit again. Now just listen to the sound of my voice and just walk with me. And I think sometimes we overcomplicate things and we don't need to. It's really quite simple. So anyways, um, I hope that this blessed at least one of you. Excuse my rambling and my tangents and all my sharp lefts and rights. Um, again, I'm still just figuring it out. I'm on my walk and um, I love you guys so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.